Number 75, Roadside Picnic. This book has been talked about ad nauseum online. I found it back in 2014-ish. Yeah, 2014-ish. I wish I could remember who turned me on to it, but somebody pointed me in that direction and I found it luckily and was just Every good thing, every good thing that's been said about this book is true, and you should read it. Uh, it's number 75. Number 618. This is uh, Ancient Stories and Other Weird Stories by Algernon Blackwood, and it's pretty great. This is a, a collection of stories. All of these have a very, very, very heavy sense of realism, even though I think uh, unless I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure these are 19th century, um, the early 20th century. Either way, very, very, very dark stuff. I'm not into the horror genre, um, particularly, but this really fits my taste. It's, uh, it's got that classic lit feel, but it's, it's way out of left field. Number 892 is 2061 the third odyssey odyssey three now this book does it does not get a lot of fanfare and i don't think i've ever heard anyone say anything nice about it the way that it exists in my mind i read this book when i was 14 uh, as i was reading the others and i remember it as a 14 year old would remember it the things that i found interesting at the time were really valuable to me and they sat close to me and there was something about this book in particular that just sort of stuck out from the others. Not that it's deeper or more interesting or better written or anything like that. It, I think it really was just the, the moment that I came across it, but I'm not going to read it again because I don't want to spoil it in my mind as it exists. So, but I definitely would recommend it. Number 283, the moon is a harsh mistress. I'm not a Heinlein fan uh, in particular. I have read quite a lot of it, uh, so it's an informed decision. But of the Heinleins that I've read, this is my, my hands down favorite. To me, the thing that is most interesting about this book that I, I don't ever hear anybody talk about are the counterintelligence methods that are employed uh, amongst the citizens of the moon and the AI that's helping them. I don't think there's anything novel about it. I think that if you went and read any sort of counterintelligence um, book or you know book about intelligence operations, uh, this sort of thing would you know be pretty common, and I'm certain it was common in the '60s and the '70s during the Cold War. But to me, it was new when I read it, and I said, "Oh, well, that that makes sense. That's how you mobilize a massive group of people without implicating." everyone all at once and yada 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 so it, it's one of those things that has stuck with me and it, to me it was the most interesting thing about the book uh in particular number 26 bluebeard by kurt vonnegut of course this isn't science fiction but i have explained before that i tend to lump all vonnegut into science fiction um it, maybe that's arbitrary but i think i'm think i'm doing his will so if you're an angry boomer uh, that gets upset about postmodernism, this is your book. Uh, I love this book. I love the love story in this book. And I love the commentary on modern art and postmodernism. And it's, I do not feel that Kurt Vonnegut in any way uh, was being necessarily critical, but. I think that he was looking at it with clear eyes and the portrayal of the artist in this book is in my mind, one of the best portrayals of any artist in a story that I have read. So, uh, I genuinely love this book. It is very close to my heart and I would encourage anyone that is reading Vonnegut that hasn't read this one yet to give it a shot. It may hit you at just the right time. Number 62, uh, world out of time by Larry Niven. This is one of my favorite Niven books, uh, even though it's outside of the known space stories. And uh, it, it, it's somehow connected to the uh, the integral trees. 
apparently that's the same universe that this is in and there's just some little blurb in the integral trees that links the two of them together but otherwise there's there's no shared story um still i love this book it's one of my favorite sci-fi premises is that you you die or you go to sleep in the present and you wake up in the future and um maybe that's appealing because uh it's it's better than death and you you get to satisfy some curiosity uh in some ways and for me i'm a deeply curious person i have uh feelings about what the future will likely look like but i would really like to see it i'd really like to see what the 24th or the 25th century looks like that would that would be rad uh this one takes you a full i don't remember if it's a thousand or ten thousand years into the future but it's a long friggin way this book also doesn't get a lot of traction uh amongst other book reviewers and readers uh, I'm not really sure why it's unpopular, but it shouldn't be unpopular. It's really freaking good. Number 16, Sex, Drugs, Einstein, and Elves. Uh, this isn't even fiction. This is a nonfiction book uh, by Clifford Pickover. And I, I really can't recommend this enough uh, to people who are interested in writing science fiction. This book is loaded with stuff. All of Pickover's books sort of jump from topic to topic but there's connective tissue in between it all and there's a pretty large section in this book on writing science fiction and i think that if you're all interested in it you should you should throw this in the pile and give it a read it's completely worth it and i think it'll surprise you the just sort of the flavor of book that this is number 1224 uh, the Songs of Distant Earth. I had to put this one in there because, again, it doesn't really seem to ever make it on anyone's list, and it seems to sort of get ignored in terms of, you know, um, Clark's larger work. Uh, he's definitely got bigger titles. But this book, it, even though it's not the most fantastically written book, you know, the the deepest book, the most interesting science fiction ideas. It's quaint in a, in a very humble way. And I think that at least the impression that I got was that, you know, this was sort of Clark's meanderings about hippie culture. And, you know, from being a sort of a stuffy British guy, uh, I'm sure that American hippies of the late 60s and early 70s were, uh, they, they looked like a, a transition in culture to people like Clark. And I'm sure that on some level he embraced it and thought that it was wild. And so I have always thought of this as Clark's hippie book. This is, uh, you know, he places the people on a, on a planet that is, uh, you know, it's a forgotten colony. Um, they're an extremely long distance from Earth, and they're unsure if anyone is ever going to come and visit again. Uh, but they hang out, and they're really kind of rad people. And I, I, I genuinely think that, that that's exactly what this book was. This was Clark's commentary on hippie culture and the possible uh, optimistic social ramifications that that hippies could provide. Number 52, uh, The Protector by Larry Niven. This was the first known space book uh, that I read, a really good gateway into that universe. It, it doesn't seem to make it high on people's lists uh, typically, and uh, it's definitely never in anybody's top tens or anything like that, but uh, it, it's definitely a book that I would say do not ignore, especially if you're gonna dive into the known space uh, universe. You go, this is a, like I said, this is a really great gateway. If you've read a lot of other science fiction, there's probably not anything in this book that's gonna just blow your mind, but I find it very entertaining. And number eight, uh, Nova by Samuel Delaney. This is a book you can smell. And, <laughs> uh, I loved this book. I read this book this year, and uh, it was the first Delaney that I had read, and I have really nothing but good things to say about it. It was deeply entertaining in the way that I enjoy um, the 
the details and the writing, the prose in general, was just top notch. And one of the characters um, doing this sort of anachronistic feat of trying to figure out how to write a novel. Uh, and it was happening throughout the book, it was just sort of a subplot. But there was something about that to me that it just seemed very genuine and sweet. And I, my guess is that that's Delaney writing himself into the novel. And as I understand it, he's kind of there in all of them. And I'm, I'm interested to see whether or not that's, that's accurate. Um, I'm, I want to read all of his work. Uh, it's probably gotten plenty of praise. Uh, this one is definitely not lacking on people's lists and whatnot. I want to drop a quick reminder that uh, I do have a whatnot auction uh, Saturday morning, and there's a link down below, and we're just going to sort of have coffee and go through some books. If folks want to buy books, it's rad. Yeah, I'll be there to sell them. So, anyway, I'll see you then. Uh, we'll have a nice time. It'll be a nice morning, and I uh, really appreciate you watching my, my listicle. <laughs> be nice to each other. Thank you.